paint scratch repair. What is the biggest mistake that most of you will make in trying to perform this yourself? Three specific areas. First, the product in which you're using. You will have unrealistic expectations for an off-the-shelf product. Second is the scratch itself. Every scratch truly is unique. Most people will have unrealistic expectations of that scratch. The problem is, is most people don't understand the actual nuances of a scratch because once again, every scratch is created uniquely. Third, it's what I call the law of diminishing returns. Let me explain this for you, which is exactly what I have to explain to many of my customers. Not many, how about all of my customers when I'm performing this type of service. Here we have this Toyota Tacoma truck. Now the problem with video and pictures is that it hides so much. It's, it's so anticlimactic to do a before and after. This bumper from up to here down to here has been tagged by another car. I'm going to move this around so you can see it. We have a big pattern of abrasions here. We have a dip, deeper area here. We've got some paint transfer here from whatever hit, uh, I should say, the car that hit this bumper. So, law of diminishing returns. Many guys will have enough experience to remove the abrasions and do wet sanding or buffing to remove this type of stuff. But when it comes to the deeper stuff, they think that they are going to be able to fill in, because this is one of the most common things that I get from my actual customers, that they're going to be able to fill in the deep scratch above the actual or surrounding material and then come back later after it has dried sand it away, buff it so it's perfectly flat and it's going to magically blend into the surrounding areas. Well, that's just not the case. Yes, you can do all those steps, but you're going to still see what's called a line of demarcation where the scratch and the touch of paint is actually laying into that deep scratch initially. So the law of diminishing returns, what does that mean? This is what I mean. So what I do is I have my customer back up from, let's say this is about 15 feet. And we ask, okay, there's the damages. Can we see it from here? The most we can even see is these two white marks here and the white scratch here. We can't even see the abrasions here because it's kind of dulled and scratched up. So at 15 feet, I could fix that by just removing the transfer and polishing the abraded areas. And it would be a perfect fix from 15 feet. So let's Let's move five feet closer. Now, at least according to my eyes, likely unable to capture on video, I can see more of the abrasions here and I can still see the white down here and there. That's where you continually, as you get closer and closer, you're gonna see more and more of the damage. So Darren, what exactly are you getting at? What is the point? Well, the point is that if I can finesse something very quickly, that the casual observer, including Johnny truck owner, is not going to be able to see, which is about three to five feet, if not typically more. If I can fix it and keep the budget small and not overthink it, because I know that is a rule when people are just walking by the car, in this case, walking by the truck, it's gonna be from normal viewing distances like this. Okay, so unless you know that you need to look for something and your eye needs to go hunting for the damage, it's called, let's play, can we see the damage today? Well, as a rule, that's just not gonna happen. So you're gonna be walking up to your truck. It's like, oh, hey, can I see the damage? If it doesn't jump right out at you, then it becomes trivial, does it not? And if that's really the case, then why do you need to overthink it? And that's where I put it on to the customer, which is money. Money suddenly changes everything. So you have to manage the customer's expectations down into a more realistic perspective. So I put the burden upon them. And if you're a car owner yourself, hopefully in this moment, I can be a voice of reason into your world because many of you will obsess and fixate on that scratch that happened at your car, at the market, and you'll lie awake at night fixating on it, not knowing what to do. And you go on the internet, on YouTube, and you find how to repair it, and you're gonna overthink it. So let me help you pull back off the edge of the cliff and apply a voice of reason, a more realistic perspective of the moment. And that's the law of diminishing returns. So you can sit here and finesse it for a week. And at the end of the day, did you actually improve it significantly enough 
to justify the added time that you put into it. Generally, no. As a service provider, that's where I have to make sure my customer understands the limitations of this, understand the limitations of the product, and me as a detailer. I'm not a magical wizard that can pull a magic wand out of my backside, tap it three times, and have it look perfectly. If you want perfection, you're gonna have to go to the body shop, and that's a whole nother can of worm. Cost, trouble, it's a lot more. So here I have my test model. It's a Toyota Tacoma. A car hit it in the parking lot. The scratches go from here down to here. So I'm gonna just jump into it and show you this repair kit. Here we have the Turtle Wax Premium Scratch Repair Kit. It actually is pretty premium. It comes with three types of abrasive pads. We've got uh, 2,400, 3,600, and 4,000 grit sanding discs. We have some paint clarifying compound, which is just a glorified way of saying compound. Then we've got your spray lubricant, which is what you spray on as you're using these little sanding discs to sand away the small scratches and create what's called a uniform scratch pattern. Then we have our scratch repair pen, which is nothing more than clear coat that you can put into the deeper scratches that haven't gone all the way through the color code itself. So this is pretty comprehensive. You can do it by hand. You start with the most aggressive and work your way down to the least aggressive. They do have pretty extensive directions, although I already found some errors in it because they talk about a pad in the directions that's not even contained within the repair kit itself. First step, clean the area off, use water, use rubbing alcohol, use whatever you want to get the chunks off so you can actually see what you're dealing with. Here we have it. Then we need to assess what we're dealing with up close and personal. And by the way, if you're a detailer, never completely trust customer pictures that text you the damage. That's just a starting point because what they'll do is they will try to take it from a distance that does not reveal the true damage because likely you're trying to give them a price over a text or a phone and they're going to de-emphasize the damage so that you give them a better price then when you show up it's a rude awakening so you need to closely examine it what I tell them is that they pretend as though their car was a person and instead of trying to get the best lighting so that that person shows up the best you want to get the worst lighting so it shows up every flaw and damage of the scratch so I'm gonna come in close hopefully you can see and then also customer may not look down here because we have scratches along here. They may be standing up here and not even get down on their knees and examine under here until you're there looking at it yourself and then you realize the scope of work just grew and now you've got to grow the scope of the price tag now because i have so much experience at this stuff i'm not going to waste a whole lot of time and what i mean by that if this is your first rodeo you're going to be all cautious and you're going to want to go in easy which by the way i recommend if it is your first rodeo so you're going to want to start with disc number four which is the least aggressive disc but i know because for example, this is an industry standard is you do what's called the fingernail test. So you'll take a fingernail and you'll see if you can catch an edge to any of the scratches. What's difficult is if it's not significant enough, it will be hard for you to tell if it's paint transfer and it doesn't really have to be paint. Just like scratches are not all created equal, accidents are not all created equal. This may be from a car, it may be from the customer pulling in and out of the garage. They may have hit the frame of the garage door, which is house paint. It could be a rubberized, a plastic material, who knows? So transfer can be anything. What it is, is the material that they hit, the surface that they hit, some of that material was transferred onto the car itself that you're performing the repair to. So as you scratch with the fingernail, you may not know precisely if what you're feeling is an actual scratch or could it possibly be transferred? That's where you have to scrutinize it closely and try to figure out. One of the ways to do that is to scratch it back and forth and see if anything is removed. Another way to do it is to start out with the least aggressive pad, which would be this one, and you can do this to it. and see what happens. Lo and behold, we had some paint transfer there. Here, 
let's take a look at this spot. Let's just try the least aggressive. So, so much for not wasting time. I have to pretend I'm one of you guys that are gonna go into freak out mode thinking that you're literally taking sandpaper to your car. Okay, ba bam I just removed it, but what I did in the process is that I created a, what I call a uniform scratch pattern, which means if I truly did that, I would rub this back and forth and eliminate any scratches so that the deepest scratch was the grit of the sandpaper, which is 4,000 grit, which is very, very fine sandpaper, by the way. You'll notice if it's actually showing up as it dried that there's still some damage there. So that tells me that that is damage to the paint of this truck versus paint transfer from whatever car hit this truck. So those are the main areas of transfer based on my experience. What I'm gonna do now is just go in kind of hot and I'm gonna pick pad number one, which is the most aggressive, which I believe they said, oh, Okay, I stand corrected. Here we have pad number two. See the confusion? Pad number one is double-sided. There's pad number two. Silly pad. Silly pad. Because the other pads have the same grit on both sides. Four, four, three, three. But there we have two, one. So it goes one, two, three, four. One most aggressive and it works your way down to 4,000 grit. So I'm gonna start with pad number one, most aggressive. Now the directions say you can go back 20 times. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay? I actually know I could go deeper, but this is an older truck. That's where I want to apply caution and I don't want to burn through the clear coat. Once you go through the clear coat, it changes the color of the base coat. So if I burn through this, that means this metallic gray that no longer has clear coat on it is going to look different than the other metallic gray that does still in fact have clear coat on it. So I have to factor in two things. One is I never know how thick this clear coat is. You can get a a depth or a paint depth gauge, but unless you get a, a highly expensive one, it's only going to tell you the thickness of both the paint and the clear coat. But it's the clear coat is the critical factor of thickness. Because once you go through that, like I said, it changes the color of the base coat. So that's just unrealistic for most of us. So I think the 20 back and forth rule is acceptable. But if you did 20 passes with all four discs, I don't think that would be safe. So in my opinion, and by the way, since this grit is so fine, 2400, that is some very fine sandpaper. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick two pads. I'm gonna pick pad number two. Actually, let's do this. Let's go with three and four, which I believe is 3,400 grit and 4,000 grit. Because at that point, that's what they're trying to do is get the scratches so shallow that you'll be able to rub them out by hand with their paint clarifying compound. So I'm gonna go through here, three and four, more aggressive, less aggressive. I'll come in with this and we'll see what we have left over. Pad number three. And I'm going, I'm gonna talk as I work. So here we are, we could go with the 20 passes rule for you beginners, which I think is a safe rule. Now, since I'm limiting it to just two pads, as a rule, once again, as a rule, I'm gonna say that 20 passes with each pad is gonna be acceptable, which makes it a total of 40 passes by the time you go through two pads. I'm gonna use light pressure, not heavy. I'm not going in level 10. I'm not going in level 10, but just light back and forth. And I already know, based on experience, that these scratches are still going to be there. But what we can do by sanding down the edges to them is we can take off the edges of the scratches that really catch the light and we can diminish it so that instead of seeing this scratch from 10 feet away, you would have to get up about, I don't know, eight, six inches from it to really see what's going on. And to me, that's really the winning combination. This was an area of deeper scratches here. So I'm gonna spend a little more time on that one. You still see a little area here. Now it matters not really whether you go back and forth, up and down, circles. It will matter if you're unable to get the scratches out completely with the rubbing compound, because at that point you will see your pattern in which way you go back and forth. But if you think about it, whether it's back and forth, circular, up and down, 
if you can see them, you can see them. Does it really matter if it's back and forth? You could, you could really kind of go down the rabbit hole and say, well, you could go with the grain of the bumper. Well, this bumper has no grain, it's not wood, but let's just, you know, entertain that idea for a moment. So it's kind of got a horizontal flow to this. Got a vertical line, but it's kind of horizontal in aspect. So if you wanted to overthink that part, you could just simply go with the grain of this bumper, for lack of a better word. I see a little bit more there. Let me go back and forth, wipe it down here. Now what I do is I scrutinize my area. I see that there's still some area here that I really did not get very well. So I'm gonna take this around the corner a little bit more. I gotta say, you know, Turtle Wax thumbs up to you because what they've done is they've taken the professional world and they've put it in a kit that actually is very user-friendly for the do-it-yourselfer. So I'm gonna give thumbs up to Turtle Wax for that. And they're not the only ones that do it. 3M makes a kit also. Meguiar's may even make a kit. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, some of them require the use of a, a drill motor. So I wanted to find a kit that was the simplest and yet most comprehensive without enlisting the efforts of a power tool. Okay, there's still a little abrasions here. Now, a little word of warning, this is a pretty tight edge not as sharp as a lot of the edges on the car but nonetheless the tighter the edge is the more careful or caution you need to apply so i'm really going to back off the pressure on this really it's ever so subtle the amount of pressure i'm putting on this okay so there we go uh, i see a little bit more here going to wet it and by the way i'm not even using their what do they call it their spray lubricant i suppose i could bust that out but i already know that it's just i wanted to smell to see if i could tell it was and whenever you lay this down after you've begun to use it you do do you need to check it to make sure you're not laying it down in something that's going to pick up some dirt that you're going to transfer and get caught in between and then end up doing more damage to your car or truck and if you do you can you know douse it like this rinse it off there's a little area right there just gonna finesse it wipe it so here, this area is really showing up as the most abraded because I've worked on that area the most. What I'm going to do now, and I'm just gonna go with my own spray lubricant, which is nothing more than a mixture of alcohol, rubbing alcohol and distilled water. So I'm going to go with disc number four now, very, very lightly. I'm going to just go over all the areas and a little bit outside of the lines of where I went with the first pad. Because now what I'm doing is I'm diminishing those deeper scratches with finer scratches. So in essence, you could say, one of many things that we could say in this moment is that you're literally sanding your way to perfection by removing the scratches that are shallow enough to be removed through this process, or you're taking the edges off of the deeper scratches so that you have polished or sanded or yeah, sanded away the edges of the scratch so that the lighting does not catch it like it did before. So there we have what I would call satisfactory results. We removed all the transfer. We've essentially sanded down and kind of blended the area of scratches. One more area I want to get right along here and because it's very light i'm just gonna just jump right into the finest pad number four and now i've just scuffed the area up and now i'm going to come in with the paint clarifying compound but this is where i want to address the other problem and that's the law of diminishing returns so this is what i teach people and if you're in freak out mode because someone hit your car, you just got done obsessing over it for two nights and you've gone two nights without sleep, this is what you need to realize. It's like, okay, body shop time. They're gonna repaint this entire bumper. Okay, cool, it's gonna look perfect. How much is that gonna cost? Anywhere for from $300 for a crappy fix to $800 for precision, perfectly done bumper. Never mind your time and effort to go to the body shop, drop it off, wait a few days, pick it up, and then that's a whole nother talk track. Once again, money is king. So it's like, oh wow, do I really want to spend 800 bucks? What if I can do this myself and make it acceptable? Because how many people are gonna scrutinize my own car or truck like I will? Well, very few people. So if you can make it which I've already done by the way, right here. Most people would not even notice that. Probably if I lined up a thousand people, 
maybe 500 people would notice it. So let's take it to the next step and finesse it with the compound so that only, let's say 200 people will notice it from that same distance. What if we can then get our uh, results to that level of perfection or lack of perfection, however you wanna call it. So you have to take the lid off. It's got a little protective uh, foil cap on the top so it doesn't go all over when it gets shipped from wherever it's made. I'm gonna put, I don't know, you can call that a dime size, doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna come in here. See, right now I'm rubbing and I can tell that this compound has no true abrasives to it. How do I know that? It's called experience. It's got more, I mean, if, if it does, it is so subtle and insignificant that it's what I just call trivial. But the good news is, is that those scratches, and look at that, notice how no color is showing up, up on that. You know why that is? because it's clear coat. So even though we, we officially or technically are removing clear coat as I polish this away, it's still clear. So it's not gonna show up in any color. When we start seeing color, that would be a problem because that means we have gone through the clear coat. So how is it, if that has no abrasives to it, how is it able to restore a shine to this? Well, literally you could take something with either zero true abrasives or a trivial amount of abrasives. But now because of my pressure of my hand, this microfiber cloth, that actually becomes the abrasives. And it can, with the chemicals that are added to this, it can actually restore that gloss. So to cut this to the chase, what I'm gonna do is bust out my professional grade Shoal Concepts S3 Gold double X called their extra heavy cut. Now I know any of you beginners would be in freak out mode. This has abrasives to it. This truly is professional grade. Now, yes, I was able to achieve acceptable results with Turtle Wax's clarifying compound. See how clarified that is? But I know I can get better results. I can finesse or tease out better results with this stuff. Now, when I buff over it, I can really feel, and I am going in level 10 right now. I'm using like some serious pressure. I don't know, is my, uh, is my arm flexing? Maybe I should do that and you can really see how much, uh, there we go. Get that bicep and that tricep working. Really, it's tricep, it's all rough. Do here, yeah, uh. oh yeah, little sidebar. In case you follow me on Facebook, and I mean my personal page, and then on IG, I have a separate IG account because I am going down this journey of added health and fitness, and I'm adopting what's called a raw plant-based diet. So if it doesn't grow, and it's not living, and I don't cook it, okay, so that's, that's the, the metrics. It's gotta grow as in organic and natural on a vine, a tree in the ground, and it can't be cooked. That's what I eat, and I'm also juicing. So you can follow along, it's called Body by Darren. So I'm gonna see what I can finesse and tweak out of my own uh, body, being a 52 year old man. So I'm going in level 10 here, and I'm going to really rub this very hard, all those areas that I sanded. And I don't overthink this, meaning you'll got guys that will say, oh, you gotta go back and forth. If you go like this, you're gonna create swirl patterns. It's like, well, you can, but you also cannot. And because I know what I'm doing here, and I'm not using a buff. If, shoot, even if I was using a buffer, it's just not gonna happen. Really, that becomes a problem when you're doing it by hand, because someone will do this. They'll get a little cloth, they'll put some rubbing compound that truly has abrasives, and they'll sit here and they'll go like this. And they will literally scratch a pattern into their paint. And because they chose a cloth that's not a microfiber, like let's say a terry cloth towel that actually is more abrasive than this, you can create a swirled pattern. But that's not the case because I'm using a microfiber. I know how to finesse it. 
as I'm doing it. And uh, these abrasives actually break down. So it's just a non-issue. It's just one of those areas that people get all watered up about because there's always gonna be some other detailer out there that wants to make a mountain out of a molehill so that he looks special or unique or more professional or something, but it pisses me off. Oh, I shouldn't say that word. That word, that's just not cool, is it? It ticks me off. It ticks me off because what it does is it scares guys that are already watered up with so much fear that now it keeps them on the sidelines and they never want to try anything. That's why it irritates me. So don't make something bigger than it has to be. Don't scare guys away by making a, a mountain out of a molehill. And if you're in some other country, you probably don't even know what that means. It doesn't, probably doesn't translate very well. It means don't over dramatize something. So here we go. Now, let me discuss once again, the law of diminishing returns, which is I just fixed this bumper. The only area that's really standing out is right here. Now what I can do is I can put some clear coat over that and we'll see if it fixes it. And you just never know until you know, you just don't. Now, because I have enough experience, I can make a guess and sometimes I'm even right. But even me, or any other guy with tons of experience. We just don't know until we know. So let's come in and see if I can capture that right there. So what I wanna do is clean it off. And this is where my alcohol will come in handy because I want to clean away any polish or what have you. Let's shake this up that's got a little pin that has a um it's got a tip that you push in once you push the tip in it can flow it's it seems very precise it's actually pretty rudimentary because it's very hard to control that flow so i'm actually being very sloppy with that but what it does do is because it is clear and shiny it actually enhances or camouflage that's probably the better word it truly does camouflage that area because what it has done is there were still some edges to it that were not able to be sanded away and now it just laid a nice clear over it that takes away that dullness or those edges to it so that's where guys would apply that and they'd be like okay i'm gonna let it dry overnight i'm gonna come back in i'm gonna wet sand it flat and i'm gonna buff it to perfection and damn it's gonna look good and damn i just said damn again i gotta stop that i'm trying to keep this rated g so they're gonna be like darn i rock it's like, okay, law of diminishing returns. You're gonna wait overnight, come back, try to sand it. But if you do that, you're probably gonna go through the clear coat. You're gonna need a buffer and it's just gonna be a lot of work. So for what? Because are you really gonna make that disappear? Well, the simple answer is no, you're not. Can you diminish it even further? Yes, you could, but that's where time is money. Law of diminishing returns. So if right here, if I lined up a thousand people and said, okay, where was the damage on that bumper? They would have to sit here and go, huh, let's see. Can I see it? Where, where, where? Oh, I see something. Oh, there it is. Okay, if you gotta look that hard, is it really worth that extra day or two worth of effort? That's what's called the law of diminishing returns. Never mind when you're just casually walking by the truck, it's just not gonna jump out at you. That's what we want. That win-win balance, that winning combination of time and effort versus cost of that time and effort. So to wrap it all up, I'm gonna give the Turtle Wax premium scratch repair kit a two thumbs up because what they've taken is they've blended the professional world of wet sanding and buffing into a very friendly kit that a do-it-yourselfer can actually use and get better results than perhaps one of these single-use only compounds. Are my lips kind of orange? See, I'm drinking my carrot juice. I'm also juicing. Mm. Ah, dang, believe it or not, that is that is tasty. Carrots, a little bit of lemon, and some apples, all organic, all juiced through my machine. So now it goes straight into my body. My body can assimilate all the nutrients so much better than having to process the fiber that's with it. Anyhow, sorry, a little sidebar. So if you like, subscribe to the channel, 
give it a thumbs up. Also, I want some feedback. If you've tried one of these kits, if you tried one of those single use products, also let me know the kind of results that you have been able to tease out of that moment. If you're a detailer, let me know how you engage with your customer and all your comments. It's not really for my benefit. It's actually for the people that come in after the fact and read it. So if you want to disparage me, you can warn all the people. Warning, warning, do not watch. Of course you can do that. Or you can just add your good two cents and help others. So we all help each other. Get that? Win, win, win. All for all of us. So till next time. because this truly does have abrasive to it. Boy, I am stumbling all over my words. Uh, you know, um, uh, wow, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, you can warn all the people.